In the first reading today, we're talking about the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God, of course, is the second person of the Most Holy Trinity. And we are told that, first of all, he made his abode among the glorious people, that in Jerusalem was his place. And so we see that God chose to be among us, that he chose to dwell with us, first in the holy city of Jerusalem, among the people to whom he had given his revelation. Now we, being the new Jerusalem, the new Israel, God has chosen to dwell with us. We are his chosen people now. And so we know that the Holy Trinity dwells within each one of us. And we see this most perfectly within our Blessed Lady. So again, we hear as this woman cries out from the crowd about the blessedness of Our Lady's maternity. It is a point of the recognition that God chose not only to dwell among us, but to become one of us. And he made this glorious heritage his own. It certainly says something about our own dignity. It tells us how much God loves us. But it again reiterates the fact that God in his mercy has chosen to dwell with us. Now again, we need to be very careful in understanding this. To say that, we could easily look back and say, well, yeah, 2,000 years ago, he became man in the womb of our Blessed Lady, and so he dwelt among us. Then he went back to heaven. In a physical sense, that is true. But as we see in the first reading, he chose to dwell among the people long before he became incarnate in our Blessed Lady's womb. He simply chose to dwell with us in a very profound and specific way for those 33 years that he was on earth. But he continues to dwell with us. He dwells with us in the Blessed Sacrament. He is truly present there all day, every day. But he is also present within each and every person who is in the state of sanctifying grace. The Holy Trinity has chosen to dwell within us. And so in going back to heaven, our Lord did not abandon us. But instead what he has done is something similar, obviously very different, but similar to what he did with our Blessed Lady. Because as we hear, as this woman cries out about the blessedness of Our Lady's maternity, and our Lord says, blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Well, that's what Our Lady had to do. She had to hear the word of God first. She had to conceive within her heart before she could conceive within her womb. Now, obviously, none of us is going to conceive the incarnate second person of the Blessed Trinity but we have to receive the message of God in our hearts. The blessedness is not so much a matter of the fact that our Lord became incarnate in Our Lady's womb. The blessedness is because of her faith and her charity, that she loved God so much that she would say yes to him becoming incarnate in her womb, that she would say yes in the depth of her heart to receive the Holy Trinity in the fullness of his being. Now he is there if we are in the state of grace in the fullness of his being. The question is, do we receive him? Do we accept him? On one hand, again, you could say, well, if I'm in the state of grace, obviously I've received him. I mean really with your heart making a conscious choice to be able to invite God into the depths of your heart. He's already there, yes, but are you making that choice? Not only just to invite him in, but then to unite yourself with him, to be with him throughout the day. 
This is what Our Lady was able to do. She simply kept her focus on God every minute of every day. And while it's not as easy for us to do, obviously, because of original sin and our own sins, and she didn't have that, nonetheless, by the grace of God, we are able to do that. But it takes work for us. So that's, again, something that we can continue to work at, to really look at that question of our disposition toward the indwelling of the Most Holy Trinity. Because God has chosen to dwell with his people. God has chosen to make this glorious people his dwelling place. So he dwells with his church, the New Jerusalem, but he dwells with each and every one of us. That is his choice to do. And when God chooses to do something, he does it with his entire being. So how much are we choosing? Or to what degree are we choosing? That's the real question. God is there whether we have consciously chosen to welcome him into our hearts or not. But if he has chosen us, Wouldn't it make perfect sense that we, in response, should choose him, not just passively allow whatever is going to happen, but actively make a choice to open our hearts, to receive him, to love him, to conform ourselves to him? That's what Our Lady teaches us. Again, it's not going to be perfect as it was with her. She was so perfectly conformed to God that God could conform himself to her and it did not violate his dignity at all. Our task now is simply to conform ourselves to him. That's why he's there. That's the invitation. So look at our own disposition. Look at our own response and ask ourselves, am I truly opening my heart to God? Am I truly seeking to conform myself to the Lord, to the most holy trinity who dwells within? Is this a conscious choice that I'm making or do I just go through the motions and forget that God is even there? That's the challenge for all of us. Our Lady then stands as the example to us, one who not only opened her heart to God, but one who lived it every moment of every day.